Hello, welcome back to the workshop. This is my motorcycle. It's a 1992 Yamaha XJ600. I was moving around in the shop the other day and I noticed it was made in February 1992. That means it's more than 30 years old. That got me thinking, what makes a motorcycle a classic motorcycle? And is this one now old enough to be a classic motorcycle? So in today's video, I wanna take you into the workshop show you around this bike, show off some of the things I've done to it, and then I want your opinion. What makes a motorcycle a classic motorcycle? And is this a classic motorcycle? So if that interests you, stay tuned. We'll get started. Back in 1992, when Yamaha built this motorcycle, it did not look like this. It would have had a full fairing, car-like gauges, and a plastic tail. This bike is not in that condition because I didn't buy it in good shape. I bought it from a kid who cut it up with an angle grinder because he wanted to make a Street Fighter. He had a lot of ambition and he had no skill. The bike you see here is what I put together from those parts. This motorcycle has a 600cc four-cylinder engine. This one is air-cooled and it's got four CV carburetors, one for each cylinder. This bike does use a modern ignition system, so it uses a CDI for spark, but otherwise it has no electronic controls. So I wanted this bike to look like a scrambler and I did that because I like to ride on all sorts of roads. I don't like to spend a lot of time on the interstate and I don't really like to go fast. Having these aggressive tires and a little bit more clearance, it allows me to take this down dirt roads and do other such things where a dedicated street bike might not be the best or might not be ideal. When I put this bike together, I wanted it to have a classic appearance. I like naked style bikes and overseas you could get the XJ600 without the fairings. It looked somewhat like this. So my inspiration was a classic 70s style motorcycle. I wanted traditional equipment. A large round headlight, analog gauges, dual exhaust, and a minimal amount of plastic. So what you see here is kind of my answer to those criteria. So for the headlight, I'm using a 60s Triumph bucket with a modern LED headlight. This headlight is made by Truck Light. It's a seven inch LED on both the low beam and high beam. To mount that headlight on the bike, I built a set of slipovers. So these fit over the fork and they sit sandwiched between the upper and lower triples. And then bolted to those are a set of aluminum brackets that I designed and had cut out of 3 8 inch aluminum. Those brackets carry the headlight. They also support the gauges. The gauges I'm using come from a KZ-1000, the police edition. I went with that because those gauges are available all the way up to 1995. They have an electronic tack that works with the XJ600's tack signal, and they use the same size front tire. The wheels I'm using are the stock XJ600 wheels. These have been powder coated red. I think they give it a really nice appearance. The tires are IRC Trail Winner dual sport tires. This is actually a rear tire mounted backwards on the front to fit the 17 inch wheel. So both tires on this bike are tubed tires. So they use an inner tube even though they have cast aluminum wheels. Because this bike had its tail cut off, I had to make my own. What I did is I used round tubing and I wanted to replicate the look of the frame elsewhere. So I used one inch round tubing and then I contoured the tail to fit 
to accommodate the original under tray and the original seat. I cut down the original seat to turn it into a solo seat. I made a set of side covers to hide the wiring, the regulator, and the starter solenoid. These are made out of 8th inch ABS plastic. I cut them to shape, glued them together, and then I attached these to tabs that I welded to the frame. I used the same approach for the front infills or the front panels. These hide the ignition coils and the wiring that comes out of the headlight. So that's all located back here. Just like with the rear, I welded a tab to the frame and that's how they're attached. I wanted to be able to strap any kind of luggage to the back of this and not worry about it. So I made the rear rack out of 3 8 aluminum. Just like the headlight brackets, I had it water cut. And I did that so it would continue the theme of the bike. I used an LED tail light from a trailer for my tail light. I built this bracket to hold it firmly to the rear fender. I wanted it to stick out far enough that it would illuminate a license plate and I'd have no trouble with people seeing behind me, seeing my brake lights, seeing my tail lights. So aside from those changes, the rest of the bike is stock. It's got a stock suspension, stock brakes, and a stock exhaust system. So now that I've showed you around the bike, I want to come back to the original topic of this video. So this bike is 30 years old. Now my question is, how old does a bike need to be to be considered classic? And is this one a classic motorcycle? Now I already know the answer. The answer is an astounding no. This is not a classic motorcycle. But I want to ask, where is that line? If this was a completely stock 1992, the way it left the factory, 30-year-old motorcycle, would it be classic? Or is it too new? Can anything from the 90s or even the 80s really be considered a classic motorcycle? So I want you guys to tell me what you think. Is this motorcycle classic? Do you agree with me when I say absolutely not? Can 90s bikes, can 80s bikes be classic? All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Short video today. I really wanted to see what you guys thought about the classic bike question. I enjoyed showing you my bike. I enjoyed showing it off. If you've got an XJ600 here in the United States, they were sold as the Seika 2, and you want to convert it to a naked bike or you want to do some upgrades or styling upgrades, hopefully looking this over helped you. You know, you found some benefit there. If you don't have one of these and you don't really care about that in any way, shape, or form, well, hopefully at least the question of what is and is this a classic motorcycle piques your interest a little bit. If you're subscribed to my channel, I want to say thank you. I really absolutely appreciate it. So if you're not subscribed, I put out stuff like this just about every week. It's always something I'm doing in the workshop. Working on the motorcycles, working on antique tools, working on bicycles. Sometimes it's my, my truck or my cars. But I put out content like that just about every week. So if you're not subscribed and this kind of stuff interests you, consider subscribing. So with that, thank you for watching.